Portfolio Builder members, welcome to our Thursday webinar class. We've got a lot of people joining in, and I'll definitely stop in a little while for Q&A. First, I wanted to review our portfolio, what's going on in the markets, and uh, today's emergency alert, what, what was that all about? Here's a look at the SPY. Um, and there's some concerning things going on in the market. Normally, rates on treasuries go up as stocks go up, but that's not been the case this year. And so that's signaling that there's trouble around the world, uh, mostly in emerging markets, Europe, China, and their trading partners that's causing a panic to buy U.S. Treasuries. And so uh, that leaves the S&P 500 as the last strong economy really to invest your money in. So that's why we're seeing the SPY go up higher uh, as well as Treasury rates going lower. So we get this oddball market where the TLT and the SPY go up at the same time. And what happened this morning is we had the sell-off and let me zoom, uh, let me go back to, let's do a five minute chart here. And so you can see this morning, the SP 500 started to aggressively sell off. And at first when I was creating the trade alert, we were sitting on a, on a profit. Uh, when you look at the difference in the drop in the SPY compared to the profit in the covered call. Uh, but as I was preparing the trade alert, it, the market started to sell off even more violently. And so that's why we uh, did go ahead and put out the emergency alert right around here near the bottom, quickly after the market immediately uh, bought the dip. And so if you missed the trade alert today, your best action right now is actually to do nothing. You're sitting on that $56 baked into the cake profit that we're trying to achieve three times a week. Uh, but if you did take the trade alert, Let's just review the math of what happened. You're still in great shape and you were just going through the process of what we would do uh, to protect our capital in the event of some sort of stock pullback. And so the best indicator for uh, volatility or downturn in stocks, uh, really the only good indicator is waiting for it to actually start to sell off. Sell offs create panics and depending on how widespread that panic gets, uh, that's when we would get more and more aggressive about playing the downside. So this is our first losing trade <clears throat> on the SPY in 2019. Uh, and if you missed today's trailer, you can skip this if you're wondering what to do and you'll stay on track for a 100% win rate this year. Now, the name of the game with our strategy is to try to never lose money. And you'll see how this sequence of trades today dramatically increased our protection uh, and can still end up with a profit between Wednesday and Friday, depending on what happens. But regardless, we've created a huge layer of protection and took advantage of that drop this morning. <clears throat> and also if, uh, if anyone's following Buffett, he loves the SPY ETF and his portfolio actually mimics it to a, a great degree. So let's take a look, three trades a week, 60 winning trades, one loser trade. Uh, if you look at all the math, you're gonna see we lost around $40 per contract uh, right now, but depending on what happens between now and Friday, we may generate a profit and we have a $2.40 layer of protection on our portfolio. So that's really important. And so this is not a bad return uh, overall, considering we usually make about $55 a contract. So when I can get five times the protection to realize a $40 loss, that's, that's a good deal. And after closing that position, we were sitting on $40,814 in profits since launching this service December 12th, 2018. So we have had to experience some pretty crazy volatility just to pull up the daily chart. Uh, you know, this is what, this is when we're gonna be glad we've played it safe with these emergency alerts and doing the in the money covered calls. Now, the market's very strong right now. Global equities, 
and economies are still struggling. And uh, so we're seeing a kind of a repeat of last year, except with without the rates being hiked. So last year, China began raising rates and crashed everything uh, around the globe. This year, everybody's easing rates and we have the same problem. Emerging markets are still in trouble uh, and everybody's rushing to America, but you know, how long can that last? Because our economy is definitely tied into the global economy. So let's just look at what happened between Wednesday and today so we can see how this strategy really works out in our favor and how we can protect our capital and really uh, make it almost, you know, not impossible, but very hard to lose in terms of uh, generating this interest while protecting the cash. So again, after we covered the position, we're still sitting at that 7.55% return with $40,000 of profit uh, in the first five months. So scrolling down a little bit. Now, when I was first doing the trade alert, we were actually sitting on a profit because it was trading around 290. Uh, it was trading a little bit above the 291.50 strike we had written. Uh, by the time I started getting into it, the market was crashing and we decided to get this out as soon as possible. And then what happened immediately, it rebounded back. So again, if you are still sitting on Wednesday's trade, do nothing, you'll get the maximum profit out of it. Uh, if you did follow our alerts, let's just look at what happened. And this is a good education for everybody because uh, when we do get a downturn in the market, it's important everybody understands how this works and is, is very good at following the instructions. <clears throat> so Wednesday's trade, the trading price was 293.05, which you can see up here. And we sold to open the 291.50 strike. So that was about a dollar fifty five below the trading price. And again, if we sell a covered call, that means we're agreeing to sell our share. So we agreed to a dollar uh, forty five loss on the uh, underlying asset, or rather dollar fifty five. So why would we do that? Because we got paid two dollars. So we had this baked into the cake profit of forty five cents if the spy were to go higher. Uh, and potentially even get a sign. So the worst case on it going higher is we'd make that baked into the cake profit. However, if the SPY were to trade down or flat, now we can also get some time premium profits as well. As the option contract loses value, the closer it gets to expiration. And again, our product is a lot like being a bank, but instead of lending dollars, we're lending SPY shares. And this is a very unique strategy that allows us to be super conservative and set us up to very, very rarely have any losses in our account. So what happened? Today, the market was selling off. South Korea's export data is, is uh, weakening still. Emerging markets still negative. Europe negative. In fact, uh, the Europeans are now looking at Japan's currency as a safe haven, uh, which is almost a joke because their monetary policy is super uh, inflationary. So there's definitely trouble abroad. <clears throat> and when the U.S. stock market was crashing, despite uh, a few of our diamond uh, stocks doing really well, let's, I'll take a quick look at that. If, you're, if you are following our diamond program, Two of our largest positions are Microsoft, which came in with great earnings overnight, jumped 5%. Uh, so we're doing really well with that as our core position in the Diamond program. And then Facebook's not as big, but it jumped 10% overnight. So it just goes to show how powerful our strategy is uh, by looking at what's under the hood of the SPY and then just building it out by hand. So we'll take a look at that in a bit, but let's go back to how we're protecting our capital. <clears throat> okay, so Thursday's trade, you probably didn't get this uh, low of a price, which is actually good. I actually had a client call in uh, worried that they'd have to pay a little more to buy back this position. And that was actually good for them because the SPY had traded higher, so the value of the SPY was greater, and that's why the cost to buy it back was greater. So we'll look at what return we're publishing in our track record, and then I'll look at 
probably the prices you guys saw by the time the trade alert came out. Okay, so here's the math and a look at what happened. So we collected $2 on the SPY, which you have to have 100 shares of the SPY per contract. And that's when the SPY was trading at 293.05. Today we paid 74 cents to buy back the call option contract, which gave us a net profit of $1.26 on the SPY. But because the SPY had actually traded below our strike price down to 291.05, we ended up with a unrealized loss in the SPY shares of 74 cents. And that's because the SPY had lost $2 of value. Now, immediately we wrote the next covered call. And so we wanna take advantage of writing covered calls <clears throat> when volatility is spiking. And so if the SPY had continued to, to go lower, uh, which it still could between now and Friday, we have a potential $2.40 to keep on this covered call, which is a lot greater than uh, the 74 cent loss. But let's look at what would happen if we're wrong and the SPY keeps going higher. So we can look at the last trading price is 291 and we're agreeing to this 289. So that's a $2.05 loss we're agreeing to on the SPY contracts, but we're getting a credit of 241. So that's about 36 cents of baked into the cake profits if the SPY goes back up. Uh, and so the net net, if, if we're totally wrong on everything we did today between uh, Wednesday to the, today's trade and into Friday, the worst case scenario for us uh, is most likely a $40 contract loss. Uh, however, if the SPY does drift lower, all of a sudden this net net is gonna go positive for us. So that's that was the sequence of trades. Now let's just see what the prices are at right now. For those of you who uh, didn't get the trade or missed out on it, you can see right now you have a 70 three cent profit on your covered call and your spy shares are down 65 cents. So right now you're profitable by 10 cents. And as we get closer to expiration, that's gonna jump to that uh, baked into the cake profit for you. Uh, so if you missed it, you're, you're doing great and you'll continue that 100% win rate. Uh, if you did take the trade, we're still fine. You know, our worst case scenario uh, is looking at losing $40 a share if the market keeps going higher today and in tomorrow. However, if it drops anywhere from $1 to $2, we will turn this into a profitable uh, total experience. So anytime the market is starting to go down sharp, you can expect this exact process to happen. And this is how we can protect our capital and make money in a downturn uh, with a relatively risk-free scenario. So we'll talk about how this is a, we're not having to pay for insurance, we're getting paid to buy insurance. <clears throat> now for, for most of you, you didn't get the trade while we're sitting at this super low price right here. Uh, and in fact, it was bouncing back up. So if you got it a little later, here's what the prices looked like and your overall uh, return. So. By the time I take the screenshots and we get this out to everyone, it's usually about a 30 minute delay. <clears throat> and in that 30 minutes, the SPY jumped up to 291.57, which was above the strike price. And the cost to cover it jumped to 92 cents. Uh, then meanwhile, the new price for the 289 strike expiring tomorrow went up to 278. So, this is all relative. You're gonna end up just about the same. For those of you who did take the trade 30 minutes after, you're most likely uh, sitting on a $19 contract loss if the market keeps going higher. However, if we trade down a dollar or two, uh, this turns very positive and into a profit. So I'll, I'll do this same document tomorrow to show everybody where we ended up but that's the, uh, the nuts and bolts of it. And if we go to our track record, we can see how this is all inserted. Hmm. 
Now again, this return on investment does get slightly inflated when we first insert the covered call. So if I just go delete that, you can see what my profit was before writing the new covered call, 7.5%. You can start to see how conservative and safe we can play it on a day-to-day -day basis using the strategy. Um, and if I add that trade back in, that puts us back to this big credit we're sitting on, which is really our insurance policy to protect our capital. And if we go down here, we can see that we had a 63% profit on the covered call. And once again, the higher the profit on the covered call, the more worried you should be. When we have a loss on the covered call, that's when everybody wins. The, uh, the call option went up in value. We get our baked into the cake profit. And uh, when the market goes up, everybody's happy. But when the market goes sideways or down, our strategy really shines. So, uh, so yeah, that's a summary of that. Let's take a quick look at our diamond program. And quite a few people joining in. We're up to 16 on the webinar, welcome. Diamond program has been doing very well. Now we're gonna not have this big of a return once we uh, cover these covered calls. Uh, you can see Microsoft shot up five, uh, $4.27 higher than our strike. Uh, which is fine. That's where we make our guaranteed profit and had insurance and protection against our capital while doing so. Um, so all year you, get, you guys have been watching me be conservative and take the smaller profit while the person buying our call options took the, the larger profit. Uh, but the truth is that if you buy call options for a long period of time, you end up losing money very quickly. So uh, we're happy to take the safe return over the greedy return every day. So Microsoft is just on fire. And if you look at its stock, it's it's been doing this for quite some time. It's now the most valuable company uh, in the public stock market, over a trillion dollars. Uh, Apple's going into earnings at the end of the month. It's already higher than our strike at 205, and we wrote the 202.50. Uh, Facebook just skyrocketed higher up to 193 while we wrote that 182. So most likely a few of these will be assigned and we'll get that guaranteed profit uh, most likely tomorrow. So that would report into tomorrow. Uh, and so that is fine. We just sit in cash and get back into those trades on Tuesday. Diamond program is for investors with at least $150,000 in capital who only want to trade once a week. And what we're doing is we're looking at what does the SPY ETF actually own and trying to look at the most concentrated positions and rebuild that. So obviously we can't go buy all 500 shares of the uh, different companies in the S&P 500. But if we look at what the largest investments are in the SPY ETF and the QQQ ETF, uh, this is what you get when you strip out the stocks that cost over $1,000. And so we end up with 300 on Microsoft, 100 in Apple, 100 in Facebook, 100 in Intel, 100 in Cisco, 200 Comcast, 900 at Bank of America, and 500 at Wells Fargo. So this is a, a very excellent portfolio that is it's outperforming our SPY strategy two to one with a lot less risk, uh, a lot less work that is. Now, the catch is folks in this program are not trying to aggressively guard their portfolio like we are with the SPY. We're more interested in a very high income using $150,000 in capital. So this one's averaging $5,000 a month since conception uh, in the first five months. And it's also had to deal with the same volatility as the SPY, obviously. Now, this product you can follow in your head because we're just trading the SPY. It takes two minutes to do the trade and it has the big benefit of being the most liquid security in the world, uh, that, which just means it has the most capital flowing into it by far, nothing even close to it. And it also has the most advanced option market because it has options expiring Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So we can't do that with Microsoft or any of these individual stocks. We can only do it with the SPY. So for investors who, who have a portfolio of 300, 500,000, maybe a million or more, 
what might make sense is to put the bulk of your capital in the SPY program because we're going to play it super safe. And again, the SPY program is not trying to get the best return. It's trying to have the least volatility and crank out steady profits. And again, it's like being the bank, except we're not loaning out dollars, we're loaning out shares. And so uh, I would put the bulk of your cash into the SPY program so you can just generate a very consistent and protected profit. Uh, whereas if you're going for a high level of income, this is a better program because we get a higher yield by buying the individual stocks. We also can point our covered calls at different directions, which we've been doing very well with this program. So we can look at Wall Street's bets in the option market, and they're usually pretty accurate. If you've been following my webinars for the past year, every single time I've been the, uh, the Debbie Downer or the negative Nancy, uh, we made less. We made less than Wall Street was telling us where to put the bets. And that's because our clientele can't afford to lose money. So you'll see in this program, the big theme is protection, protection, protection. Very rarely are we writing the strike above the price of the, the security. Uh, so we have protection from week to week, even in our diamond program. So that's what's going on in this one. Next Tuesday will be the next diamond alert. Now folks on the free trial won't get this content uh, until you upgrade your free trial and we're giving out a 30 day uh, free trial to basic clients. So if you purchase the basic program, you'll get 30 days in our diamond program for free. Uh, but it only makes sense if you really have at least $150,000 to follow that program. Uh, meanwhile, a bonus in our diamond product, product is the emerging market strategy. Uh, which is now a buy and hold. And this should be less than 25% of your portfolio. This is a lot like buying blood in the streets. Um, emerging markets has had somewhat of a recovery. Let's pull up a chart. So if we look at the one year return on the EEM, it's, it's doing very well. Uh, but when we zoom out and look at the big picture, let's go to weekly. Uh, it's unclear if this is a uh, bear market rally or a recovery because, you know, they're printing out trillions of dollars. They're reversing the uh, monetary policy in China, Europe, Japan, uh, still sitting right around 0%. So money's basically free right now. You can borrow for just about free if you're a credit worthy bank uh, and then go gamble in the stock market. So that is definitely supporting the prices right now. And it's definitely questionable. Are we gonna get a recovery now or is there more trouble ahead? Um, so this is the market that's being focused on by the big banks like BlackRock who has six trillion in assets uh, JP Morgan, their recent shareholder, they're betting big on emerging markets. So this is where a lot of capital is uh, being focused on right now. And in this bonus portfolio, this is a buy and hold. You got to expect some, some volatility, uh, but this is where we can get some growth uh, in the coming years. So if we look at what's underneath emerging markets, we can further drill down uh, and get some better exposure. So if we do look at what Emerging Markets Fund, which is the third highest traded ETF in the world, it flows its capital into these different countries, which we can hit uh, with country ETFs. It's hard to get the direct securities in these countries uh, while being an American. And in this portfolio, we also have some inflationary protection. So while all the banks are printing insane amounts of money and loaning out at 0%, I'm pretty shocked that uh, the metals market is still suffering. Uh, so we'll see when the inflation finally creeps its way in, uh, but it will as they continue to be uh, very easy with lending out capital. One note for everybody, uh, for some reason, Tencent did change their ticker. So if you are following this one, uh, you got to change the ticker to be TCTZF. 
And so this portfolio is doing the worst, 4.89 since we launched it, same date as all the others. And again, it should be 25% or less of your total portfolio. And for investors who want to try to get some growth in their account on top of the income, that's where this really fits into uh, to your strategy. Uh, now, <clears throat> another bonus when you do get the diamond is access to our crypto portfolio. I haven't updated this yet, but Bitcoin is higher. I think it's at 53 or 5,600. Um, but this is up 34% and had been sitting on a loss for months. So this is doing really well and is something that uh, is probably worth at most 5% of your portfolio. So that's another bonus when you do upgrade your basic program. You're going to get access to our diamond product for 30 days, the bonus emerging markets portfolio, and access to crypto if you're in, interested in that. Um, just a quick look at the crypto. And for those of you who are part of our crypto diamond program, we do have a new update coming out soon. <clears throat> and uh, some slight rebalancing we're going to do to our portfolio. So this is chart of Bitcoin this year. And yeah, so we're having some problems around the world with currencies. Um, Turkey and Argentina uh, and Europe, amongst others, are having problems with their currency. And I think that's a big reason we're seeing a lot of capital continuing to go into Bitcoin, um, which is interesting that the precious metals aren't uh, having the same uh, reaction yet, but um, again, our strategy is diversification. Look where the biggest money is flowing and just ride the, the wave of the whales. Some other interesting data. The dollar is climbing higher and higher. This is obviously uh, bullish for the stock market and bad news for weak countries with weak currencies. So this is a lot like what happened in the start of 2018, we had U.S. starting off really strong, rest of the world getting hammered, and then by quarter four, all of that caught up to, uh, to the U.S. So we'll see how this plays out with our program. Again, we're playing it super safe at all times, protecting capital. <clears throat> the Korean stock market is a good leading indicator for global health. Um, a lot of people call it the canary in the coal mine, and it is having some bad data out today. Uh, and you can see its stock market is slightly down, so that's something we're always keeping track of. And now the big debate is whether the rates, the effective federal funds rate, will go up or down or stay flat. And um, so there's good argument for both. You know, we got all the foreign central banks are going uh, more and more dovish uh, because of the global growth slowdown. Meanwhile, U.S. data is relatively strong. I mean, companies like UPS are, are showing some weakness, uh, but our core companies are doing great, which are in our diamond product like Microsoft, Facebook, Cisco. Uh, all of the core products in the SPY are doing just fine. So, so it'll be interesting if the Fed were to surprise everyone and raise rates, that would really punish the rest of the world. Uh, now it might cause some trouble in the US stock market, uh, but it would certainly punish uh, everyone else. So that's something we're closely watching. If we take a look at the inflation data, again, it's very low. So uh, does not seem to be any signal that they should raise rates other than the stock market is getting so hot. And uh, although they're not supposed to support the stock market, they clearly have been. Uh, and then another important data, when <clears throat> the 10-year treasury got above three and teetered up to 3.4, that's when we saw the crash. That's when the bond market was so attractive that it pulled a ton of cash out of stocks. And, uh, and we got that crash for three months in 2018 towards the end of the year. Um, and that's just not happening this year. We're having a flood of capital into U.S. Treasuries. And so if the Fed is trying to get interest to shoot over 2%, and they're only paying 2.5%, 2 
That means investors who are long-term holders of these treasuries are okay with a half a percent return over time. And maybe they're using leverage and have super low interest, but that's just not a great return. So to me, it seems like we have a lot of people speculating uh, that the Dove, uh, that the Fed will have to lower rates and that this can go even lower, in which case they can sell their bonds for a quick profit. So it seems as though the momentum play both in the U.S. bond market and U.S. stock market is very strong right now. Um, and, and people like Ray Dalio who run parity funds, they use a lot of leverage and have a balanced bond stock portfolio that's uh, in a rare case where they're on profits on both sides at the same time. So at some point, these hedge funds that are in the billion to $100 billion range are most likely going to try to attack both of these markets and take some profits out of it. Now, the folks like BlackRock with $6 trillion, of course, they can't do those sort of moves. Uh, but that is what I'm expecting and why you continue to see me uh, being the negative Nancy, playing it safe all the time. All right, let's see. I think that, let's see what other news articles were interesting enough to pull up. Uh, someone else was pointing out that the last time Treasury rates were going lower while the S&P 500 was going higher was right in 2007 before we had a recession and the 2008 crash. Um, so that's interesting. Argentina, uh, is their <clears throat> currency is crashing. It's lost uh, almost 10% of its value just overnight. So that's not good. Probably a reason why cryptocurrency is doing well. Uh, 3M, which has a very global exposure, was down 10%. Uh, so we, we're having some mixed earnings coming in. I was concerned that we would have, uh, well, you know, for the last three months, all the corporations were uh, playing down earnings, revising earnings down, and, uh, and now most of them are coming out with Beats, uh, Microsoft, Facebook last night, like I said, a big part of our Diamond program. Uh, but some of these companies that are more globally exposed are showing weakness. And so that was part of the fear this morning. Also, the Treasury is still going lower. And this is just an abnormal um, thing where uh, you get bonds going up and stocks going up at the same time. And it's easy to explain when we realize that the rest of the world is, is experiencing more uh, slowdown that they're having a trouble getting out of. So this is the... South Korea GDP, they're like a hub for electronics. So uh, that's not a huge downtick, but if that were to continue to grow, that'd be very worrisome. Uh, initial job claims surged the most, but that was after a historical low point. So that's not a big deal. Uh, and you can see these are popping back and forth all the time. So I'm not concerned about that at this point. Uh, durable good orders. So there's, you know, there's little sign of weakness in America right now. Um, my big fear at this point is just the the large sized hedge funds, which in the grand scheme of things are still tiny. Uh, there has been a historical amount of hedge funds shut down last year, and that's because they can't beat the SPY ETF. None of them can. And so the only ones that survive their biggest pitch is that they can reduce your volatility and give you a smaller return. So they, they sell safety. That's what the Ray Dalios and the Jeffrey Gunlecks of the world do. Um, here's that same report, Facebook surges. Uh, they just hired the lady who wrote the Patriot Act of all things to, uh, to be their general counsel. So, uh, whether you like Facebook or not, you know, they just continue to grow. Their profits continue to pile up. They're adding some things to Instagram to uh, have a retail checkout. And they really have a monopoly in this unique product that they've come up with, this uh, my, or, uh, Facebook. Uh, people are continuing to wonder what's pushing these yields lower. And, and I think we clearly understand global slowdown is creating rush to safety in U.S. Treasuries, 
Uh, and beyond that, people think they can flip it for a profit on the bond. And the dollar remains mighty at this point. All right, let's see what kind of questions we got out there. We're up to 17 people in the room. And uh, I know Jerry wants me to pull up his spreadsheet. If you post me your link, Jerry, I'll check that out. Let's see who else we got on here. Okay, we got, okay, Fred. Fred has some questions. Why in the money versus out of the money covered calls? Great question. Let's take a look at All right, so so the question is why would we do an in the money covered call versus a out of the money covered call? And so <clears throat> All right, so if I look at this by with a little more perspective, uh, we can see over the last two years, you know, it's it's really just been pretty flat. Uh, sure, if you're involved at the beginning of 2017, you had a nice rally, but after that, the market's just kind of gone flat. It's really gone nowhere, and we went from a scenario where the entire world was showing uh, growth and green shoots to a period where the entire world's showing the opposite. We're seeing uh, mainly real estate, overpriced real estate in the top cities are are having tons of weakness, lower prices, and they just, uh, the rents have become too high. People are getting out of these cities and moving to cheaper places. And so this is all signaling a global slowdown. And so, sure, the short-term effect has been a huge rush into U.S. equities and U.S. treasuries, because uh, we're somewhat isolated from China and Europe in terms of uh, having such a strong domestic economy. Uh, but what's going to happen from here? Do you think that when we play it safe, we reduce any losses if we're if the market doesn't go lower, and we can actually generate a profit? Um, but if we were to do the out of the money covered call, we'd essentially be betting the stock market's going to go higher. So what you've seen with a lot of these defensive plays, we can make around $50 a contract even when the market's going flat or up. And that turns into a 30% return over the period of a year when you collect $50 three times a week, uh, 52 weeks a year. That's 156 opportunities to collect a $50 contract. Uh, now to put that into perspective, to get that same return, we would need by the end of this year, the S&P 500 to climb all the way to 390. That's just crazy. You know, I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, and, uh, you know, maybe we do get a nice rally with the China-U.S. trade deal, which I do think will happen. Uh, but to think we're going to go up 30% this year is just absolutely insane. And so when I can protect my capital and do the in-the-money covered call, I'd rather play it safe. So let's look at the kind of the math on it in the money covered call so you can get a feel for what happens. So I'm going to pull up a handful of trades so we can kind of compare them. We'll just do the first three uh, below the trading price. We can look at the profit opportunity on each of these. Okay, so let's start off with uh, this 292. So if I look at the 292, right now the SPY is trading at 292.53. So I'm agreeing to a 53 cent loss if I sell that covered call. Why would I do that? Because the speculator will pay me a dollar for the right to borrow my shares. So I'm being the banker 
and I'm taking a unique deal where I actually get insurance on capital and a profit if the gambler is correct. So if he's correct, he'll probably turn his $100 into maybe 200, 300 bucks. And the gamblers are loving it this year. They've been actually doing very well. If he's right and we're quote unquote wrong, well, we still make that spread. So we're gonna make on this particular trade, we'd make 48 cents profit if we got a, if the option was exercised. So if the option was exercised, the worst case scenario is we would get 48 bucks. Now, $48 three times a week, 52 weeks a year, 156 times. That's about $7,500 of income per year on a $30,000 uh, investment to own 100 shares of the SPY. And that's a huge return. But what's more important about that return is we're doing it with protection at all times. So, uh, so yeah, the in the money covered call gives us protection and profit. It's a very rare thing where you can actually get paid to have insurance on your on your investment. Usually you pay to have insurance. So that's what's so beautiful about this. Now let's look at the one below it. Now, again, if this were to trade right to 292 uh, by tomorrow, this profit would be slightly higher. We're going to get to buy back the covered call for very little and also increase the option premium from the time value. And so uh, that's a pretty complex thing, but basically these option contracts have two things. They have the inherent value based on the strike, and then they have a time value. And so the longer the call option is, uh, is owned, the less valuable it becomes as it gets closer to its expiration. So we're making money in two ways with this strategy. But let's say that's not enough insurance for us. And so the key thing that we'll look at is if the market is trading quickly to the downside, we're going to be getting more and more defensive. So let's look at this one. This one is 50 cents lower than the last one. So we're agreeing to a dollar two loss on the underlying asset, but we're collecting a dollar 38. So we're getting a dollar 38 of protection. And if we're wrong and the market goes higher, we're getting $36 profit. Okay, so you're gonna see the lower we go, the less money we'll make on the upside, but we're still making money and we have protection. So let's look at this one, 292.54. We're agreeing to sell our shares for 292. That's a $1.54 loss, but they're willing to pay us $1.77. You're picking up $23 guaranteed profit if the market goes up and you're picking up insurance on your assets of up to $1.75. So the more volatile the market becomes, the lower we can go on that strike and still have a guaranteed profit on our assets. Uh, right now, volatility is really low. So we've actually been doing this strategy in an environment that's not that great for selling call options. The lower this goes, uh, the less these options cost. So we actually look forward to downturn in the market because it allows us to get a higher yield relative to uh, how far in the money we can go with our covered call. Now, is there a time where I would want to do in the money calls? Sure. Uh, that would be something more like this scenario. So let's look at when I would put the uh, out of the money covered call that is. If we've seen a extreme pullback in price during that entire period, expect to see in the money covered calls, which generate the time premium profit and gives us protection from downside risk. Okay, until that trend clearly changes, uh, we would be writing that very safe in the money covered call. And at this point, we would be adding our hedge, which I'll bring up next. Okay, but then we have a complete turnaround. And we get the dovish Fed, we get all sorts of bullish things. That's where we might start going to right at the money or slightly above the money. And so uh, certainly we've been more defensive during this rally than we should have been to get the maximum profit. Uh, but this has been a very unusual time. So I'm very happy to have a uh, sit on a 
current profit. Let's pull that up. Yeah, I'm very happy to be sitting on this 8.3% return while being super conservative. We're playing it very safe and just generating this interest by being the bank loaning out the spy shares. Okay, let's see what next. Okay, now Fred says, when do you trade the QQQ? So he's looking right here. What are these for? So, so exactly, if we wanted to do the covered call strategy with growth ETFs, we would change from the SPY to, uh, to these guys right here. I would only do that after the S&P 500 had experienced at least a 35% correction and was on a strong rebound. Um, so this would mean the stocks are extremely undervalued. We've seen some extreme hysteria in the stock market and uh, we've already maximized profits selling these three times a week covered calls. And then we start seeing uh, the market rebound. That's when I might switch to, I might say, okay, let's go zero here on the SPY and let's put in the growth. And that's when we'd be doing those out of the money covered calls. So it'd be after a, uh, you know, a once in 10, once in 20 years stock market crash. While we're sitting at all time highs, it's too risky to do that. That's why we like the SPY. It has better diversification and it gives us the opportunity to collect interest on our asset three times a week. So you can't do that with QQQ. You can only do it weekly. So um, that would happen once again, Fred, after we'd seen probably a 50% crash or at least, let's look at the VIX. If I saw the VIX pop up above 45, that's when I would start looking at uh, a bottom. So we've, we've touched it a few times. 2015 had a little flash crash. Uh, you know, we've had a few tiny little intraday or intra-month spikes to that level. But if you look at the 2008 crash, it hits 60 on the VIX. So that's when you know things have really become extreme. So right now we're nowhere near making the move to go to the QQQ. We're going to be trading the SPY for a long time. And so perhaps for who knows, uh, could be years before we get a stock crash. And it won't really matter because we, we follow the market. We write the covered call. We generate the interest playing the bank's position. We're not lending dollars. We're lending out SPY shares. And with the mindset that number one rule is don't lose money. Okay, let's see what kind of questions we got. Okay, I got a question. Does open interest give you a hint on what to sell? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Wall Street's a lot smarter than you or I, and uh, most of the money being traded now is with artificial intelligence. It's not even humans doing this. And so they um, they look at a lot of things. They They super fast to calculate news. They are searching for words in uh, uh, the shareholder meeting scripts. They are looking at sentiment. They're doing all kinds of crazy things and they put the money where their mouth is. And these banks can go for years without losing uh, in a single day. And so certainly the open interest and the volume is what I, what I focus on. Uh, and then after I look at what Wall Street's betting, I'll usually go a, a 50 cents to a dollar safer than they are. And that's because our audience, again, I'd rather make a safe return than a greedy return. Uh, but yeah, you can, every time we've bet against Wall Street, they've made a little bit more than we have. Also, uh, Henry, you were right. Uh, the spreadsheet had a funny mistake, which we fixed, where it was, wasn't was counting the uh, closed positions twice, but it was doubling the, the new credit. So I fixed that on everybody's spreadsheet. And if you do see that, let me know. Um, but thanks for pointing out that on Tuesday's webinar. Okay, we got a new question from Fred. Here, Fred, I'm gonna open you up. You're a fellow I spoke to. Hey, Fred, you got your audio by chance? 
So Fred, Fred's asking, do you buy back the option versus letting it expire? Yeah, I always buy back the option because I want to, yeah, if you wanted to speak out loud and I can unmute anyone else, I'll probably just do one at a time. Uh, if you do want to speak, let me know. Uh, so, so certainly I always want to buy it back because I don't want to miss out on writing a new one. So we're not in the business of trying to get lucky with the S&P 500, uh, you know, climbing to uncharted territory. That wouldn't be bad for us. You know, if it wants to go higher, then we have very simple trading and we make the same profit. We have their baked into the cake profit. Um, but that's not the name of the game. Our name of the game is we want to be the bank. We want to protect capital. We want to earn interest. And so to earn interest, we're, we're in the game of writing covered calls and then buying them back, and then writing covered calls and buying back. If we realize a huge profit on the covered call, that means the underlying asset is showing some risk to the downside. And so when that does happen, it is smart to add insurance because that's our only way we lose. And that's what happened this morning is we, let's go back to the five minute. You know, that's a pretty sharp crash this morning and it could have continued. So what did we do? We bought back the covered call for a big profit and we wrote a new one much lower. And if the market kept going lower, we wouldn't care. We'd be making that same interest. Uh, now the market popped right back up. This is a very strong market. Um, so that's not a problem for us. Now we're sitting on a profit on the new one we wrote and we'll cover it and do a new one Friday. So that's the, the name of the game on this strategy here. Let me expand. We got some more questions piling in here. Okay, Fred. <clears throat> Fred's new question is: What do you do if the spy has a large drop below uh, the sold call strike? Right. So what you saw today was a great example of what we do when we get anywhere near our strike. We uh, we cover it and we move the strike lower. So that will always be what we do. Um, now, if you watch the video, I I pointed out, hey, Wall Street is betting that this thing is going to pop back up today, but uh, there was more put option volume than we'd seen uh, all year. In fact, all year, the entire market has been very weighted on the call option side. Um, so certainly that will be the uh, standard protocol. If we see the market is sharply heading down, we cover the covered call for a profit and then write a new one. And because the volatility will be higher as we write that new covered call, we're getting a better option premium. Let's see, anybody else? I'm gonna... Unmute everybody. Let's see who all's got their mics out. Jerry, did you want me to look at your spreadsheet? You want to post uh, me the link to it? Okay, everybody's unmuted. If you want to, uh, unmute yourself, go for it. Hey, Henry, how's it going? Good. How are you today? Doing good. Uh, Investor714, am I late? A little late, but uh, it's okay. We uh, will send out the replay in a little while, so look out for that. You can watch it. We had a very good uh, detailed explanation of how the last few trades played out. Hey, Jason. Henry. Hey Henry, how's it going? Um, you know what? You would you would make this program the cat's meow if you could do auto trade. Oh, we're working on it. We're working on a phone app to uh, to make this hands free. So just hang in there. It will be. Uh, that's our big plan. Is we want to 
You know, there's no reason for you to have to sit there and cover the darn covered call a robot to do that for you. Uh, so the, the broker that we are intending to really focus our strategy around is Robinhood. I'll just pull that up. Uh, when you're in the game of, hold on, let's see. All right, so when you're playing the bank, which is what we're doing, not only do we want to make sure we never lose money, we also want to make sure we're not giving away any uh, easy change to broker dealers. We've got some kiddos over there. No worries. Uh, and so that's why we like Robinhood app. This is the uh, fastest growing broker dealer in the world. They are valued at $5 billion. They're highly invested in, in San Francisco with private equity. And uh, call them crazy, but they will pay for every last single part of our strategy. They'll pay for every buy and sell in your stocks. They'll pay for every assignment. Um, they pay for everything. And all of these trades get pushed through the exact same liquidity pools. So it's not like they're buffering the prices or anything of that nature. Uh, in fact, they make money because a lot of hedge funds uh, will actually buy their order flow. So believe it or not, you know, that's how they make money is uh, these huge hedge funds like James Simon. Uh, you know, they've had one of the few hedge funds to beat the SPY 30% a year. All AI, they've got about 170 PhDs in uh, California. All they do is create auto trading bots. They will pay Robinhood to be able to be on the other side of your trades. And because Robinhood has a lot of young folks, they're usually just easy trades. Now we're playing a strategy that's uh, a lot like being uh, the black rock of the world or a bank. Um, but this is a great product because their phone app is light years beyond any other platform. They really have great technology uh, and you can follow our strategy commission free for the rest of your life with Robinhood. They federally insure up to half a million and they have an API. What an API means is we can create technology to auto trade this from our phone app to their phone app. Uh, so if you haven't set up an account and played around with it in our daily update is our affiliate link. So I do hope you guys will use that set up an account. Just play with it. You don't have to switch your broker dealer right now. Uh, but, you know, if, if you're paying even a couple bucks a contract, you know, and you're doing five, ten contracts three times a week, you're giving some random broker dealer a good chunk of your profits. Why would you do that? And so these guys are coming after all the big broker dealers. They're growing very quickly. And the problem they have is they don't have sizable accounts. they got a lot of millennials. We're coming in with tiny, tiny account sizes. So our group will be treated like gold by uh, folks like Robinhood because they're desperate to attract larger sized accounts. So for now, uh, worst case, try the app. You can do these trades on the go from your phone, two minutes, you know, cover the position, write the new position. That's it. That's really all there is to this product. Um, the market's going down, we go lower the strike, Ad protection market's going up. We're probably at the money or, or just above the money on the strike and getting a little greedier with our profit. How's it going for you so far, Henry? How many uh, contracts are you trading at a time? I'm trading uh, 20. Oh, dang. So, yep. Yeah. Um, so I did uh, three trades now and uh, started. And so, yeah, it's, uh, I just had to get used to your worksheet there, spreadsheet. I'm not a spreadsheet guy, but uh, it seems to be, I keep playing with it. It seems to uh, be coming around for me. Cool. Yeah. So spreadsheets are optional. A lot of people hate spreadsheets. Uh, I love them. Really organizes. Oh, let's see. This guy wants to unmute. Oh, no, he's self-muted. CGY Ben, if you want to um, unmute yourself, you can chat. Well, Henry, that's great to hear. Uh, hear you doing well. 
and hopefully we can enjoy doing this for years and years to come. It's it's very repetitive. It'll be interesting to see if something like the QQQ or EEM gets popular enough to open up the option market to have three expirations. Um, uh, but for now, the SPY really is the only product in the world that can do this. Right. And the reason why, Jason, is I travel a lot, and that's why I'll tell you what, if you could just set this up in auto trading and it just automatically, you know, did our buys and sells for us, that would be, like I said, the cat's meow. Yeah. Oh, yes, for sure. Our, our plan is to grow this group, hopefully to around 10,000 members and try to uh, tr try to partner with Robinhood uh, because we do feel like we can fill a, uh, a need that they have in their company. And um, at the same time, they provide... Uh, the best opportunity for folks like you who have at least $30,000 saved up to uh, to really maximize the profits of this strategy and also be able to do it with the lifestyle where you're traveling. You know, if you got the phone, you get the text alert from us, you know, you can see the strike, you're done. Go to the phone app, cover it, write the new one, you're done. Two minutes. Uh, but yeah, for sure, we do this the automation would be more powerful because we wouldn't have to sit there and wait for any downturn. The software would pick it up and cover your position and, and add the protection on the fly. Right. So, so the only issue I would have with Robin hood is basically the 500,000 um, uh, insured because, because if I'm trading more than that, then you have some risks there. Obviously it's very limited, but you do have some risk once your account gets over the 500,000. Yeah. So you, you might want to set up like an, LLC for uh, you know anything over uh, half a million that might be a good one. Uh, you could also be writing off some business costs. Not that you're going to have any commission costs from Robinhood, but you know I, uh, if you did have an LLC, you could write off a few things, some office space, and uh, probably you know sneak in a few extra dollars out of the IRS. Uh, right. Now they don't support at this time. 401k. If you are looking for a really good discount broker for 401ks, uh, Trader is a good one. Interactive Brokers, of course, much uh, more established. Uh, these guys are a great discount broker who really uh, one of the leaders in the industry. So there's good options for your 401k to do this. And uh, what's nice about the 401k and the IRAs is you don't have to pay the profit uh, Alice Wynn wrote, do not all brokers. Yeah, so half a million is actually the uh, limit to any broker's insurance. So that's a good point. So you're carrying that same risk. Um, but, you know, I'm sure Henry's been with his broker for 10 years, so he feels safe there. And, uh, well, but that's not, that's not true. Fly by night, fancy guys. But that's not true because um, TD Ameritrade actually buys extra insurance up to 25 million. Oh, wow. No, that's great. And uh, as I build a better, so I do try to build relationships with the brokers. And so I will try to, uh, you know, express the concern that, hey, we're bringing you guys big portfolios and they need insurance all the way up uh, to the top. So that's a great point. And as we, as we grow, we will definitely try to push them to uh, right. increase that. I think there's two tiers. They, there's two tiers they can buy insurance. So obviously, the uh, the first one is the 500,000. The second one is they can actually buy insurance up to 2.5 million and then up to 25 million. Nice. Yeah, my first years were all in the Thinkorswim platform, which is a great one. Um, but you know, you're you're paying for premium. Everything about TD Ameritrade's premium. They have the premium platform, the premium support. Yeah, the premium insurance. They also have the premium uh, cost per contract. Although they, you know, what are you paying over there, Henry? I pay very little. <laughs> they negotiate. Yeah, if you're a smart bargainer, I know. Hey, Henry was trying to. Henry was trying to get us to pay him to use the product or, or you know, <laughs> selling him into the program, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Henry's a smart guy. He knows how to. To play it smart and save. Let's see what other questions we got out there, guys. So I blew my 100% win rate today. I, you know, darn it. But uh, if I had to do it all over again, I would. 
The best indicator of downturn is downturn. And that was a sharp sell-off this morning, uh, followed with some negative news. But, man, that thing is just rallying right back up. So if you did miss the trade, you remain 100% win rate. And, uh, you know, oh, well, we lost $40 max. If we do get a sell-off at the close or tomorrow morning, uh, that will turn into a profit from Wednesday to Friday. So big lesson today was how do we make sure we don't lose money and profit from downturn? Let's talk about the hedge real quick, and then I'll let you guys go. So the first line of defense is the covered call, easy peasy. Uh, but how do we make some serious money if the market's going down? Well, here's two tickers, TECS and VXXB. Now, I have not put any capital into those yet. Because uh, I would rather join a crash as it's clearly developing um, rather than try to predict one's going to happen. And so let's just look at those tickers. <clears throat> so this puppy has crashed. Whew. 35 down to 12.64 since that Christmas massacre. Um, now if we go out weekly, since 2016 alone, this puppy's crashed from 152 to 12. So this is the three time bear technology. And I'm trying to remember what the opposite of it, I think it's TCZ. Uh, I don't remember the now, uh, so the NASDAQ 100 is at all-time highs. Uh, this is basically a three-time leveraged uh, opposite of that. And if we break into new highs, this thing could go quickly to four to six bucks. So that's why we don't want to jump into it. Uh, but if we do see a real meltdown beginning, that's when I would put some, some of our capital into uh, these two products, the TECS and the VXXB. Uh, so one is against technology, uh, which is leading the market up right now. And then the other is a ETN. Uh, so the VIX is a popular way to protect against shocks in the market, accelerating downturn. Um, but it's hard to do with call options. They're expensive. You can't get in and out uh, as easily as just a normal ETN. So it's like an ETF, uh, but it's trading a futures product. And so let's look at what this did during the last pullback. So during that October crash, it went up from 26 to uh, 50. And that was just with a short little quick crash for three months. I mean, it was pretty substantial, about 15% pullback in the S&P 500. And it delivered a 100% return. So if we if we think about that, you know, what would the ratio be? You know, we might start off if we get a little crash. All right, well, we'll let's go. We'll go to 80, maybe 10. Okay, so now that's going to tell us. Okay, we got to sell some spy shares. We got to get rid of 200 spy shares to pay for this. And saying, all right, let's buy 2,000 of Tex and 1,000 of VXXB. TECL, oh yeah, okay, that's that's what it is. Thanks. Let me pull that chart up just so you guys can see the opposite. Now this puppy is the opposite, super risky. You can see it's uh, sitting at all-time high and uh, went from 75 to 168 this year. So this is the opposite of Tex. Um, so you can see that same shape. <clears throat> So it'll be very simple. If we see that a meltdown is occurring, the strike price will be getting pushed lower and lower to make money with our boring way, watching the grass grow, you know, just basically making money on option time premium. Uh, and then we can generate some extra profit with around 10 to 20% total of our portfolio flowing into uh, to these hedges. Um, so again, I won't purchase these until they have gone up considerably in value to play a momentum trade. And um, 
we'll, we'll get into some more of the details. There's some really good analysis from a uh, company called Nomura. And they are tracking at which levels that the SPY hits that causes automatic selling in the market. And so those levels, even though they rarely get hit because the market's been so strong, uh, we will have some pretty good indicators from some very good um, from some very good analysis that's just looking at what would cause sell-offs with the CTA group uh, that will tell us, all right, if the SPY gets to this level, we're going to turn on the hedge. Um, so that's just not the case. Right now, we're just having protection with our covered call. Okay, Fred says, would you recommend using margin? Yeah, this product, you could do a one-to-one -one margin, no problem. So you could double the return. Uh, and, and as you can see, Art, we're trying to protect capital at all costs. So that's why I would say that. Uh, Paul, if you could email that link, I'll check it out and get back to you on that one, the YouTube video you uh, sent me. Jerry, are you out there, Jerry Simone? Did you want me to look at your spreadsheet today? Jerry's been doing good. He went and reprogrammed our spreadsheet with me live uh, and has been doing the covered call on the VXXB, which is uh, really nice because it has a super high premium as long as the market goes uh, well, as long as the market doesn't go up too fast, that's a very strong strategy, but the market has been going up pretty quickly here. Any other questions out there? Oh, okay, Paul's wondering, should we write puts on the SPY instead of covered calls? <clears throat> yeah, that's a, that's a similar strategy. That's a very similar strategy. Um, but it does add a layer of confusion and difficulty to the product um, and also a layer of having to get approved by your broker. The problem with doing that is you don't get the double paydays. You just, you earn interest. And when the crash happens, you get, you know, excuse my language, but when the crash hits and you're writing the put options, you get fucked. You have to buy it for a loss. Um, so I'd rather own the asset Enjoy the appreciation. You know, we can get the double payday owning the asset. So if you own the asset, uh, you have the ability for the underlying asset to increase in value, plus you can take the option premium out of the market. If you write cover, uh, rather, if you write a put option contract, you'll do great 99% of the time until the market crashes, and then you simply have to buy the uh, – the equity as it's uh, losing value quickly. Um, so I don't like that method nearly as much. I knew some fellows who would use leverage and do that, and they, they would write it really far out of the money with probabilities there in the 75% range. He was trying to make 5 to 15% a year. He did it for, for decades, but he ended up in some serious, uh, some serious tangles in the uh, 08 crash. And so uh, they call that the, uh, the ant strategy. You get all the ants marching up the hill, uh, looks fine, and then they plummet to death at the top. And um, so yeah, for sure, this is, this is a very specific strategy that you're gonna find is very hard to beat in terms of uh, profit and protection. So we have the most diversified uh, stock in the world because it owns 500 different companies. Largest position, three and a half in America's number one company, Microsoft, trillion dollar company. But it's only three and a half percent. Three and a half percent is your largest position. So you're not going to find a more diversified portfolio than owning the SPY. Uh, and then you're not going to find an option market where you can write the covered call three times a week. Uh, so that's that's why you know, we want to be the bank lending spy shares. We don't want to be lending dollars. So when you write a put option, you're lending dollars. You're not lending uh, spy shares. So there's a big difference. 
and it's not nearly as smart. Uh, there's no IRA feature at Robinhood yet, Fred, um, but I would go with interactive brokers. They will take your money and give you very low rates. Uh, if you go to Ameritrade, you better be a good bargainer because they'll start you off, you know, quote the prices you're already getting at interactive brokers if you want to go to Ameritrade and uh, they'll match, I'm sure. What other questions we got out there? All right, gentlemen. Well, I really appreciate your time. Hope you're enjoying the program. We have a new trade alert tomorrow at noon Eastern. And that trade will just be from Monday through Friday. Again, we're going to be renting out SPY shares for income most likely with a good level of cushion with a maybe an at the money or in the money uh, covered call. We'll have to look at where Wall Street's betting from Friday to Monday tomorrow. And uh, next Tuesday will be the next live Q&A webinar. So I hope to have you guys join us back then. And I really appreciate everybody's uh, conversations today and we'll see you tomorrow morning.